Welcome to Mark Bayeski YouTube channel. It's great to talk about Moldavite today. Again, um, I have a thousand stories of Moldavite, if not 2000, but one profound story that always stuck in my mind that I was gonna write about in the book, but didn't because I thought I don't want to put a downer on things. So I'm gonna tell you this story now, which was going about nine years ago, back about nine years ago. So I had a beautiful client. I'm not gonna mention names because it's still out there in the ether. It's still out there in the universe, it's still out there. So I don't want to sort of name any names, but I had a really lovely lady who used to come to me, soft and gentle. Her name was, I was just about to say her name. Oh my God, start again. <laughs> you just said you weren't going to mention names. <laughs> All right, come on. It's because it's, it's a tough one, this one. Um. So... There was often times that I would do healing sessions on very beautiful people who were going through uh, traumatic stress. And uh, there's this kind of um, understanding about Moldavite that you should never give it to somebody who um, isn't ready for it. And yet I never really found that in any of my work. In fact, whenever I felt that somebody was really in a bad place and they needed strength, I would give them Moldavite because this idea of Moldavite bringing out all the negativity in you is only just one small aspect of an incredible crystal. It's not a crystal, it's, it's a meteorite. It's not a meteorite. <laughs> it's a tag tie. <laughs> oh God. So as a healer, I'm embraced to uh, follow my, my guidance and I had a table like that over there and it had maybe 50 or 100 crystals on every time I was given a healing session. This one particular day, this lady had been to me over the past year and she was having trouble with, um, let's say a boyfriend who used to uh, frequently come around and be aggressive. She tried very hard, but because she was in love with him, she struggled to be able to get rid of him. For some reason, after the healing session, she cried. She cried all the way through the healing session. After the healing session, she got up and we gave each other a cuddle. And at that moment, around my neck was a Moldavite and I hadn't used it on her, but for some strange reason, I felt the need to give her a Moldavite. And I said, I would like to give you a gift. And I put this piece of Moldavite around her neck. It was a teardrop and it was about nine grams. It was beautiful. And she like, she was wiping her tears. She didn't know what it was. And I said, just wear it. This was something that I felt uh, her family and spirit who were around me at that moment was guiding me to, to help. <clears throat> she got up off the healing bed. She had some water, which I had energized the water. And she went down the stairs. And when she got to the bottom of the stairs, she tripped at the bottom stair. She wasn't looking properly. She was more concerned about her head because when you went down my stairs, I always used to say, mind your head. And as she, mind, she was minding her head, she didn't mind her feet and she twisted her ankle. So like, oh God, the Moldavite wasn't even thought about. She'd hurt her ankle. And so she sat down um, and did a little bit of healing and she kind of, struggled down the stairs I helped her and um, I said are you going to be able to drive because it was a uh, left foot and she says oh yeah I can push it in but it's it hurts I said are you sure you're going to be able to drive and she said yeah 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 I said oh just go very careful she she left and then my next client came and then the following day and then the following day and I think about four days went by and I had a phone call and uh, she said, I'd like to meet up for a coffee, no problem. So she came into the village, we met at Barpodas and we sat there and, and she, uh, her leg is, is tightly uh, bandaged with this blue kind of strap. Uh, and I went, oh my God, are you okay? She said, yeah, I am now. She said, I've been struggling with it. And I said, she said, I just want to share something with you. And I said, yeah, sure, panicking. I said, can you imagine that, going for a healing session, then coming out and falling? I said, you know, that, that was weird. And she says, actually, it wasn't weird, Mark. And I said, what do you mean? She said, you know, after I had that trip and I got into the car, 
I had this overwhelming feeling to go to the hospital. She went to the Costa del Sol hospital and they checked it and saw it was, um, it had a, a fracture. And they did what they did and it was about three hours. She was there about three hours. She said she had a phone call as she was leaving for home and the police had called and they said, would she go down to the local Marbella police station? She went down, she said, when I got there, they sat me down and they told me that when I should have gone home, my boyfriend, abuser, was in the house and he was smashing stuff up. And the next door neighbor heard this, called the police. They went into the house and he had a gun. He had a gun. And she said to me, that was fate. That was fate, Mark. That was the Moldavite. You put that thing around my neck, it was the Moldavite. And I said, that's what I think, that's what I'm feeling. I said, I can't believe you've just said it because I didn't even think that I put something around your neck and you'd even think it. She said, from that moment, she said, I had a bad feeling when I got into the car and went to the hospital and all the way through the hospital of going for x-ray, going to do this, that. She says, I had this sick feeling like something was not right and I was thinking about him. So she said, she was obviously extremely thankful and she took the Moldavite off and she said, you know what, ma'am? It's done its work. I don't need it anymore. And I was nearly in tears. That is one of tons of stories that I can share with you with Moldavite and how profound Moldavite is on so many levels. So that level, how would you determine that? Was that an accident? Just by accident, she fell at the bottom of the stairs and just happened to go to the hospital well, I guess only you can make that decision. There was another lady that came to me. She was only about 22 years old. She was lovely. She was Danish and she was lost. Really lost with life. Her energy was really low and depleted and she wasn't feeling good. And I gave her a healing session. At the point of feeling that there was something wrong and I wasn't very happy. And whenever I get that feeling, it's normally an indication in my stomach. It kind of like something doesn't feel good here. So now I'm having to find it. I remember turning to my table and I had three Moldavites. I placed two in each hand and one directly on top of her chest. She had bare skin, she had a top bare skin and I remember placing it there. I put my hand over, I put my hand over her chest and my other hand out and I started the healing. So half an hour had gone and I knew something was wrong but I wasn't sure what it was and then the healing started. At the end of an hour and I'd say 25 minutes, my body was kind of numb and I was feeling weird. I felt like I was, I was filled with toxins. I felt like I, I, I just breathed in a load of fumes and I felt a bit sick. And I sat down and drank some water. When I'd finished, the lady who had Sat, sat, sat up and she took the Moldavite out of her hands and she said, what are these? And I said, they're called Moldavites. And she says, why did you use them? I said, I don't know why. And as I turned and looked at her, where the Moldavite was, there was a massive red. It was really, really strange in, in looking. And it was, it was like a, 
you can only describe it as a rash, but it was far more than that. And where the Moldavite was, it was like somebody had, had, had put sun onto a skin, burning sun onto a skin. And then when you took the Moldavite away, the Moldavite was her pale white skin. But around was all red. Now, this was very, very, oh gosh, it must have been years ago, but it, it, it hit home so hard. Now, I've only been doing this maybe three or four years, but this was weird. And I was a little bit shocked. This was new to me. And like, okay, this is weird. And she, and, and she looked at me and she says, what's wrong? And I said, your, your chest just here. And she had a top on, so it was like, you could see it. It was like, and she went, oh, what's this? And she's panicking. I'm like, oh, I've just given the healing session. And now she's panicking. What a, oh, this is gonna kill the healing. And I says, I, I actually don't know what it is. I have no idea. She says, what do I do? And I said, I don't, this is the first time I've ever seen anything like this. I don't know. Well, what did you do? I said, I just gave you healing there. What's this Moldavite? Is it dangerous? I said, no, it normally brings out things, motions, sickness, illness, toxins, anything like that. And I said, so whatever it is, it's telling you something. And I said, and to be honest, I said, I feel a little bit toxic myself. She gave me a hug. She was a little bit nervous. I felt a bit strange. She went. About two or three weeks later, I get a message. Hi, Mark. It's so-and-so. I said, Hi, how are you feeling? She said, a lot better. From leaving the healing, she went straight to a GP. A GP then sent her for tests and they found that her liver was not just damaged, but actually, as she said, on the verge of collapse. Um, she was smoking and drinking and eating the most terrible food. And her relationship was, to say the least, toxic. She was a bit miserable most of the time. I never saw a smile, not once that I knew her. And that was because she had no joy. All of this now made sense. She was then um, put on some kind of medication. I didn't ask, but she said that she's feeling a lot better. She changed her whole diet. She is now eating healthy and she left a toxic relationship. I said, you sound better because she, she called me back then when we used to call each other. <laughs> we don't call each other now. I think we, it was a call, definitely a call. It wasn't a text because we didn't really text then. So it was a call. So we just say text these days, don't we? So I like, you sound better. I said, would you like to come for another healing? Is that what you're ringing for? She said, I've never felt better. She says, and I just want to thank you. And she said, it was amazing what that crystal was. And could I buy a piece? And I said, sure. So she came up maybe three days later and she chose one of my Moldavites that I had for sale. And um, I think I have seen her about three times since over the past 15 years. And she's strong, healthy, happy. And she always wears Moldavite. Those are two stories amongst hundreds of stories of what may seem at the beginning of wearing Moldavite, something so traumatic and something so dark and, and dangerous. But actually, if you keep it on or you just wait for an outcome, I have never seen a bad outcome at the end of anything when wearing Moldavite or working with it as a healer. These two things are 
very rare, but they do happen. And I am very aware when I put a piece of Moldavite on of my environment, of what I'm doing, of what my body is doing, what my mind is thinking. And I am very aware of things when I'm wearing it. What I believe what Moldavite does is it heightens our awareness and it shows us what needs to be healed, both mind, body and spirit. And thus I will always say Moldavite is the most, most powerful crystal in the world. And that's where I leave it. On a final note, I don't know how many days are left, but we are coming up to the end of the month soon, I'm sure. I have no idea. And if you go to markbayerski.com and make any purchase of a crystal, any crystals out of the whole of my Pure Energy Healing Crystal Collection and all of them I've worked with them, your name will be put into a draw. So if you buy one crystal, you will get your name in the draw. If you buy two crystals, you'll get two names in the draw. And they go into here. And then at the end of the month, I will pull out the winner. And the winner will receive a rare specimen, a dream for many collectors of Moldavite. And this is actually a beautiful triangle shaped, pyramid shaped Besanitse hedgehog. It is mint, it is perfect, grade A, 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 and it is also museum quality. Every single hedgehog is mint. There is no damage at all on this. But actually, for people who love Maldivite, you will find you'll be blown away by putting this on your third eye. It is a rare dream to hold and to have. I have loved working with this crystal, so whoever ends up with this crystal is going to be a happy bunny. Well, guys, it's been really nice talking to you today about Moldavite. Have a great day and keep shining bright. And uh, by the end of the month, this could be yours. So <laughs> have a great day. Take care.